in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a design that is a beach scene. It's got a little wave coming up onto the, onto the shore with some sea foam. It's got a little lounge chair, a towel, a palm tree. I love this one. As soon as I was just working on it and finished with it, I'm thinking, man, I want to go there. That is where I want to be today. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm here in Wisconsin with breezy, cold days still, somewhat. Oh, man. A beach. Take me there. Take me to the snail. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And I do have past beachy designs, and I will put links to them in the description box below. So check for that, and I'll see you all next time. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a sandy color, glittery acrylic. Every time I do a beach type design, I like to find the sandiest, glitteriest color I have available. And that's what I use as the background. It's just, it really gives you that sparkly water type of feeling, at least for me. After I have that color over the whole entire nail, I'm going to encapsulate it with clear acrylic to make sure that it is really nice and strong and to protect that glitter so that it just has a, a layer of protection. If you file right on top of the glitter, chances are most glitters are going to end up looking really dull really scratchy and it'll take the color right off of it and you're left with sort of a slate gray which is not what you're going for when you want beachy glitter then with a water type of a color I'm going to add a little bit of a wave washing up onto the shore at the tip of the nail apply a smooth coat of that acrylic and then use the tip of your brush to push it into that wave shape once you have a couple of those little waves sculpted in you can take white acrylic and add the water breaking at the surface when you're doing these little little waves and you're adding this little bit just kind of take your time have fun with it try to be random with it that's one of those things that's so impossible when you're trying to be random that's the last thing you are it's just how human nature is but just try to kind of be free with it don't think too much have something else going on in your head actually just try to put what you're doing into the back of your mind so that as you're sculpting these little waves they have a certain element of of natural authenticity to them it's hard to do but it is and once you kind of get that idea in it really helps i do the same thing when i'm painting something with say a lot of hair I stop thinking about it too much because you're going to end up with too much structure and with something like that you want some freedom once you have a little bit of sea foam going on top of the shore and you have your little waves done then i'm going to take and i'm going to be sculpting a palm tree on a nail form backing and this whole design is really about that palm tree i just i love palm trees and i love the classic palm tree nail art so i whenever i'm in getting into like the summer feelings my brain instantly just goes palm tree and it's kind of like when you take a dog for a walk and they go squirrel every time it's like as soon as they go for a walk they see a squirrel that's just where their mind goes same thing for me summary designs my brain goes palm tree I love them I've always done palm tree nails every single summer on myself just like the classic ombre background nail with black palm trees been my thing and so wanting to jazz them up and make them a little bit more interesting I'm going to make this extreme three-dimensional palm tree coming up growing out of the nail it is just so it's obviously extra I mean who are we kidding but it's fun it's fun so we've got the palm tree coming up just make that first curved um uh, trunk of the tree and then on your nail form backing with a bright green acrylic we're going to be sculpting individual fronds so start out with one frond after that has just set up enough where it is going to hold its shape where it isn't going to rip when you peel it peel it off of the nail form backing grab that and then place the end onto the end of the uh, tree trunk and then hold it in place so that it has that nice gentle curve so after you've got the first one done, you're going to have to go through and do the next one. I ended up doing six fronds total, I think is what it, what it ended up being six or seven. So you just want to keep adding different layers of the, of the palm fronds until you have a nice full tree. The fun thing with palm trees is that there's so many different types and so many different styles. The fronds can look different. The trunks can look different. So you can kind of be a little bit free with it it doesn't have to be too specific kind of like with the with the waves on the ocean on the tip of the nail you can just kind of you know sculpt leaves and sculpt these and place them down and have a little bit of um, freedom with it it's not like you're sculpting a character that has to have very specific facial features and very specific colors because they have to be recognizable a palm tree is going to be recognizable even if your greens are a little different or your trunk is slightly different if it's straight or if it has a texture to it your fronds can be really wide they can be narrow you can have a lot of them you can have a few of them some of my favorite palm trees actually are the ones that just have like three spikes coming out the very top center and they don't have anything that hangs down at all those are fun so there's just a lot of options that you can go with for sculpting something like this that make it so that you can have some individuality and make it exactly how you like it so we've got um, our next little layer of palm fronds I find myself that I can do two at a time and kind of keep a rhythm going where one is setting up to the point where I can pick it up while one of them is being attached to the 
to the top of the tree and just kind of keep, like I said, a rhythm going. Obviously, if your acrylics set at a different time, maybe you can do three leaves at a time if they cure slower or if they cure really fast, maybe you can only do one at a time. If you aren't quite as um, experienced making this type of a design, maybe you want to just do one at a time, even if your acrylic sets slowly so that you can give yourself enough freedom of time just so you don't have to feel stressed and rushed and like you aren't going to get it done my my fronds are a little bit wet still so they're wanting to hang down as you can see they don't look as fluffy on the tree you can go through later especially if your acrylic tends to stay a little wet for a little longer and actually give them some of that height later on if you want i find that clear acrylic hold things so much better than any color acrylic so if you have a frond that you want to stick up in a certain manner after you have it positioned in the spot that you want it to take a little bit of clear acrylic and just swipe that on the underside of the frond and it'll keep its position because the clear acrylic will really hold it in place. So that's something that if you are looking to just do something that'll help it a little bit, that's a great way to do it. Also keep in mind that any of your tools, if you hold the fronds like a tweezers, if you actually pinch it, you will end up getting it where it is stuck to the tweezers and not to the nail. So as you can see, even though I am using my tweezers, it is not actually closed. And if I do close it, it is very gently. This particular palm frond is being just difficult you know like when you're trying to get a little kid to get in the car and it's just not working and they are everywhere but in the car that is what this palm friend is doing so keep working with it if you have something like that that's not working maybe try a different method if it's just one of them though it's just being difficult so just you know keep it up keep being uh, persistent with it and it'll get there. I'm going to adjust all of those fronds to make sure they're in the position that I want them. Once they are there and they're how I would like them to be positioned, I'm just going to secure all of them with a little clear acrylic underneath so that they stay exactly how I placed them and to make sure that they are fully attached to the trunk of the tree. Once that's done, I'm going to start sculpting my Adirondack chair. This is one of those things that is kind of an iconic beachy thing as well, even though I personally don't think I've ever sat in an Adirondack chair on the beach because I would never carry one out to the beach and I'm not fortunate enough to just live on a beach. But it just is one of those like picturesque things that I personally think of when I think of like a super elegant beach day. So I'm going to be sculpting all of these chair pieces on my nail form backing. I have the back of the chair, the seat of the chair and then I'm going to make a foot rest or a leg rest with some more of that white acrylic you could sculpt this chair with whatever colors you want if you want some other versatility and you don't want to make a chair like I did some other ideas of little extra pieces that you could make with this design is you could put a towel down on the beach and some flip-flops or you could do a beach ball or a bucket. I did a beach theme design a year ago that had um, a bucket and a beach ball and flip flops and a little sand shovel and more of that like kid play day at the beach versus this one, which is more of like a relaxing adult day at the beach. So if you wanted to just switch it up and either do multiple designs for a beach day type of a theme, or just make it so that there was more going on on this one or get rid of the chair or the palm tree or whatever it is that you're thinking, I highly recommend checking out that video as well, just to give you some more ideas. And I can put a link to that in the description box below. So we have the armrests and then we have the other legs of our chair. So you're going to need to have a square for the seat, a rounded rectangle for the back, a rectangle for the footrest, two L shapes, one facing each direction, and then two bar shapes for the armrests. Those are the pieces that you need. After you have all of those pieces sculpted and they're all hard so that they are not going to bend when you pick them up, you're going to start to glue them together. So take your time with this. I know I keep saying that, just take your time, but it's so true. Anytime you're working on something and you feel rushed, chances are there's going to be mishaps going on and you just want to really try to slow things down so often and it'll go better and probably quicker than if you are feeling rushed. That's one thing that I've noticed more and more with when I'm working on something. If I feel like I'm rushed or I'm not in the right headspace for working, nothing goes right. I don't actually get anything done. Sometimes if you're just too tired and you're like, oh, I really should be doing something and you just feel like you can't. If you start it, especially if it's something that takes creative prowess or you know, artsiness, it's not going to go very well and it's going to be a frustrating experience and you're not going to have any luck with it anyhow. So it's better off just to wait. And so if you are in that position when you're working on anything, just wait. Or if you don't feel like you have enough time, either simplify your project so that you're just working on one thing instead of trying to complete something so that you don't cause just too much stress and aggravation. It doesn't do you any good. So we've got our little pieces of our chair that we're gluing together, especially for something as tedious as assembling this little chair. As satisfying as it is, it really is tedious. Nail glue especially. It just is one of those things that 
you know, if you're in a rush, it's going to fight you every step of the way. So we're gluing all these little pieces together. When you're gluing them together, you want to kind of keep a mind of how it's going to sit on the nail. So after you have it assembled to this stage where you have the legs glued on and the chair is assembled, but not the foot rest, set it against the nail and then see how the legs hit and you may have to cut them off. If the acrylic pieces are thin enough where they, you can cut them with a scissors, go ahead and do that. If they're too thick for that, then you're going to want to use an e-file just to file them into that shape. Get some nail glue on the bottoms of the legs and then glue them into the spat on the nail. Grab the foot rest, see how that's going to set. If it looks like it's setting right, go ahead and glue that on. If it's looking a little bit wrong in some way, too long, too, too short, needs to be shortened on one side and not the other, fix that same process, scissors or e-file, then glue that in place after it's on the nail. And then after that has been held in place, you're going to want to secure that to the rest of the chair with more of the white acrylic and really any of the places that you did glue together, you just wanna make sure that they're all secured with more of the white acrylic. So any of the places on the arms, on the back of the chair, where the legs touch the sand, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that you aren't relying solely on the nail glue because the nail glue will betray you. It will just stab you in the back when you're not looking. So make sure that you, <laughs> you give yourself some backup with the white acrylic. The last little bits that you can do for this is I like to add a little bit of an extra touch. I'm going to add some pink to this design. Evidently, I like pink if you hadn't noticed that by any of the clues that are obviously in my channel in this video. I'm going to be adding a little pink towel rolled up and I'm going to drape that over the armrest. Once that's done, I'm going to do a little bit of detailing with some acrylic paint, add some little highlights to my palm tree, to the fronds, just here and there, little bits of of little green dashes just to make those look a little bit more, a little more lively. You can do the same thing on your, um, the trunk of your palm tree, grab some brown paint and add just some lines, really quick lines going all over the tree. Same concept, don't think, just make line, 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 going all the way up the tree. The less you think about a lot of these situations, actually the better they turn out, which is just such a silly concept. I'm going to be adding some stripes to my pink towel. Pink is a fabulous color, but if you add purple to it, it's even better, at least in my opinion. And so after you have those purple stripes on there, then you can also go through and you can add details to your Adirondack chair. They have the wooden slats that go back and forth across the chair that make it up. To do this, or not wooden slats necessarily, but the slats. To make it look like those slats, we've got white acrylic that this chair is made out of, but white acrylic paint is brighter, it's more opaque. So if you just do the outlines and that you paint on these pieces, the planks with white acrylic, the little lines of the, uh, the white um, acrylic underneath, there's so much white acrylic being set here, of the paint. The lines of the paint are going to show up as being forward and almost three-dimensional and it looks so fantastic and you don't have to do any other outlining really it's just so simple it's a one and done if you want to do extra outlining or shading on it you certainly can it is an option but if you don't if you want to keep it simple that is i mean it looks great just as it is I personally can't stop myself, so I'm going to add a little bit of a gray line <laughs> underneath some of the lines just to really kind of give it a little bit more definition. But again, so unnecessary. Just if you are one of those people that doesn't know when to stop, basically, is how that goes. On the back of the chair, you are going to want to paint in some of the cross pieces. So after you have the vertical lines painted in, we've got all of those going back and forth from side to side go through and just add a horizontal line that runs across them. You can do one or two. Two probably looks a little bit more realistic, but depending on how big your chair is, how much space you have, how big your brush is, you may only want to do one just to simplify it. I am going to do the two, add the little gray line underneath them. And then that is, that's it. This design is just so cute. It is one of my absolute favorites. Like I said, a beach nail, palm trees, all of this is like my first thought every single summer. It's my favorite, my favorite concept for the summer is palm trees. So I hope you guys are as excited about palm trees as I very clearly am. After you have this nail done to this point, top coat, glossy top coat over the background, matte top coat over the 3D art. Make sure that that sand looks wet and glossy and the water is nice and crisp. Once all of that's been dried, this one is good to go. If you are curious about any of those past beachy summery type designs, like I said, I will put links to them in the description box below. So check for those. They are some fun ones that I've done in the past and I will see you all next time. Bye.